Today we're going to answer the important question, why do chemical reactions occur? Why, for instance, does methane react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide in water, and not the other way around? This question has been studied for over a thousand years. Several books have been devoted to this query. Googling for this question returns simple explanations about atoms and molecules becoming more stable. Before even giving an answer to this question, chemistry students aside, one might ask, why bother? The reason we are bothering with this question is that one of the most important facets of human existence, namely the phenomenon of two people falling in love, is a chemical reaction pure and simple. Therefore, the answer to the question of why chemical reactions occur explains why love happens. The verbal answer is very simple, but outside of a few experts on the history of chemical thermodynamics, no one is really aware or told the essential basics as to why chemical reactions occur as modern science understands things. This is exemplified by the popular dating site chemistry.com, run by anthropologist Helen Fisher, who has no fundamental training in basic chemistry, but is part of a conglomerate that pulls in near to half a billion dollars annually on essentially false advertising about what constitutes the how and why of basic chemistry between people. Let's hear Fisher's thoughts on why love, the chemical reaction, occurs. But why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? This is what Match.com, the internet dating site, came and asked me almost five years ago. And since then, um, and at the time I said, I don't know, uh, we, uh, psychologists know that we tend to fall in love with somebody from the same uh, socioeconomic background, same general level of intelligence, same general level of good looks, uh, similar level of education and religious and social values. Your childhood plays a role, but nobody knows how. Timing plays a role. But you can walk into a room and everybody is from your background and same general level of intelligence and good looks. And you don't fall in love with all of them. So, why then do chemical reactions occur? The first substantial theory proposed to answer this question, based on actual experimental measurements, was the Berthelot-Thompson principle, put forward independently in 1854 and 1864 by chemists Julius Thompson and Marcy Ellen Berthelot, respectively, which states that the release of heat is what explains why chemical reactions go. The greater the heat release, the stronger the reaction. In this sense, one might suppose that the heat of passion or temperature of sex is the key factor determining why people fall in love. The hotter the sex or heat release, the stronger the reaction. Many, however, know quite well from experience that physical heat alone will not determine whether a reaction will go to products or last in the long run in the form of a stable relationship. The fact of the matter is that the Berthelot-Thompson heat as the driving force theory of chemical reactions was shown to be incorrect being that entropy, otherwise known as the transformation content of chemical processes, aka the second law of thermodynamics, plays a significant role in all chemical reactions. It was German physicist Hermann Helmholtz's famous 1882 paper on the thermodynamics of chemical processes that showed that heat production is not the reason chemical reactions occur, but rather the value of free energy change is what determines in what sense the affinities between reactants are active and will cause the chemical reaction to occur. This logic was advanced in the years to follow through the work of German chemist Walter Nurst, who showed that reactions occur only when there is a decrease in free energy of the reacting system over time. Free energy refers to the work output of the reacting system. The logic that free energy decrease is what explains why chemical reactions occur can be rephrased in the sense that a chemical reaction will only occur if energy in the form of work output is released from the reaction. Thus, the explanation that one's relationship is working beautifully is quantified thermodynamically by the explanation that one's reaction is showing a decrease in Gibbs free energy over time, meaning that the relationship is going naturally 